Justice. Now, since 1992, two political parties have dominated the political and governance landscape. Now, this despite the many political parties that exist or are registered. The EC, as of 2018, put the figure at 23. In the last uh, 12 to 8 years, we have seen some independent candidates contest. A few have been successful at the parliamentary level, but we are yet to see anything close to success at the presidential level. I have been speaking to a man who believes 2020 is the year for that paradigm shift. His name is Marik Kofi Ghani. Watch this. Gary was about five Ghana cities and Olonka uh, somewhere in November last year. This year is about 12, uh, 12 Ghana cities. Mm. That's a huge jump. Mm. And that doesn't sound to the ordinary man on the street like an economy that is working and that is better than any other economy they're seeing. But, but you understand the dynamics. You know how some of these things go up, the inflation, the I, exchange I totally rate and agree. all of that. And it doesn't only affect the ordinary person. But, the people you, see, you say are in the 2% mm, category mm. are also affected. Well, it depends on how you think they are affected. Let me, let me give you another example. Mm. When I'm driving or when I get on an STC bus going to uh, uh, WA, for example, the ordinary man in the same bus as I am has to go to the, the, the uh, Tuna Solar Road, mm. terrible road. The man in authority is either going to go by flight or is going to go in his V8. He doesn't feel what the state of the road is in. I feel the state of the road. The ordinary man in, in Tuna Solar feels the state of the road. Mm. So, you know, it's not, we don't feel the same things in the same ways. Mm. Um, I go on the street every day when I'm driving home sometimes, uh, run around Kwashima, you see, I have to literally stop and ask little children on the street at 9 p.m. in mm. Suawotono, uh, some will say 20, some will say 10, so I have to literally take the water of them, pour it in my car. I don't need the water, mm. but I need those kids to go home. So we can say all we want about the economy on paper doing well. The reality is that for the ordinary Ghanaian man on the street, the economy is not doing well. You've been campaigning already? We have been doing a lot of work, yes. What do you think is going to change in this year's campaign, and are you ready? I'm more than ready. Mm. I mean, I, and I like to say that this is not just me being ready. I think Ghanaians are ready to sort of make history this time around. Mm. Um, a lot is going to change because, um, you know, campaign this year is different. Mm. It's not, you know, sometime in 2016, by this time, you know, the big parties would have been out by now holding rallies. rallies uh, yeah, and, uh, um, and, and that's the nature of it. And then from rally, you go to the, the usual door to door and all that, all the way to December, mm. uh, throwing big money around. That mm. hasn't been the case this year. And I, and I pray it stays the same because what it has done is that it's actually it's leveled the playing field how exactly it's leveled the playing field because this year for example as i said um nobody's doing rallies at least not yet at least not now uh, what it means is that we all have access to Ghanaians in their homes and is the best person who is the smartest or has the smartest way of getting to those people that's going to win the election. The, the other thing I think that has become very obvious is that people, I think we've gotten to a point where Ghanaians have immediately suddenly seen that we've done this for 27 years and it hasn't brought us any result and that we need to change this. It, you know, you can't, you, you would really need to convince them if you are in the NDC or the MPP as to why um, they should vote for the NDC or the MPP because now they can feel it. Mm. You know, previously it was okay because people would get a 500,000 uh, there, uh, but this time around, people are feeling it. Uh, you think.